Approaching the fire here, looking at another one of Daniel's prophecies. This one is related to the times, time, and half a time that Daniel talks about over there in Daniel chapter 7 and in Daniel chapter 9. And we want to show how this is related to the Roman Catholic Church and how he was telling us the year in which Babylon would be destroyed, I believe. I have to add that I'm not a prophet nor nor am I able to make predictions but I'm just looking at the scripture and what it says in Daniel chapter 9 and Daniel chapter 7 and ignoring all other interpretations of this scripture so that I can get an understanding from it for myself this late in the age I think it's very important that we do our own research Remember that a lot of the church doctrines that have been passed down to us have been passed down for hundreds of years. In other words, a lot of what we are repeating today in our churches is information that was understood by people hundreds of years ago. But many are coming to the understanding now that the Father is working with us in this day and age a lot of people are having dreams a lot of people are getting divine inspirations there's a lot of people understanding biblical facts that were veiled to those people who studied it hundreds of years ago and it shouldn't be surprising to think that this information would have been hidden from them why would they have needed it many of those people who came up with these scenarios these end time scenarios lived the full life and passed on they're no longer with us so why did they need this information no it is us in the end times that need this information we are the ones who are facing the tribulation we are the ones that are awaiting the rapture we are the ones that are seeing Matthew 24 played out right in front of us We are the ones seeing the 400 year prophecy spoken of in Genesis chapter 15 being fulfilled on our TV screens. So it shouldn't be hard to believe that it is us who the Father will reveal many of his mysteries. It is us who actually need these mysteries to be revealed. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about the times, time, and half a time spoken of by Daniel in chapter 7. But before we do, I want to point out something he said over there in Daniel chapter 9. Verse 24 is talking about the 70 weeks that are determined upon the people and upon the holy city. Now, we understand that this 70 weeks was actually 70 times 7 equaling 490 years this is proven when you look at the timeline given there in verse 25 where he says from the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem unto Messiah the Prince will be seven weeks and three score and two weeks This is a time chart of human history. This one is an older version. The newer version goes from the birth of Adam to President Obama. It is more up to date than this one. But even in this edition, I can show you the timeline that was given to Daniel. We see over in this area where people like Artaxerxes and Darius and Cyrus, the kings who made the decrees to rebuild Jerusalem, fell back in about the year 425 AD. Not exact. I covered that in another video and I don't intend to cover that here. But then when you fast forward until the death of Christ, and the destruction of the second temple it ends up being exactly 490 years now a guy named Charles Larkin in his book Dispensational Truth 
charted out how these 490 year cycles have been planned out throughout history. There's a 490 year period from the time of Christ back until the rebuilding of the temple. And then there's a 490 year period from the rebuilding of the temple back to when the first temple was built. And then if you go back about 490 years, you get back to the birth of Abraham. So these 490 years are important. Now we want to talk about Daniel's prophecy related to the times, time, and half a time given over in Daniel chapter 7. In Daniel chapter 7, he's talking about the kingdoms, the futuristic kingdoms that will rule the earth. You see there in verse 19, he talks about the fourth beast or the fourth kingdom that would rule the earth and how it would be diverse from all the other kingdoms. It is the fourth beast kingdom that we're living under now. We'll explain that diversity in another video. In this one, we just want to pull out some key points to his timing. See right there in verse 22, how he said the ancient of days will come and judgment will be given to the saints of the most high. This is the time period that he's talking about related to the third temple. So he's explaining a lot of the timeline related to those times. Now, I don't intend to go into the detail of what's all Daniel's talking about here in chapter seven. He's talking about the 10 horns of the kingdom, the kingdom that we live in now. He's talking about how one king will subdue three kings. I will touch on it briefly. Here is your first kingdom here. Here is the second kingdom here, the Medo-Persians. Here is the third kingdom here, King Alexander. And here is the fourth kingdom here. And from this fourth kingdom, which is Rome, you can see how it's split into 10 different toes. This time talk of human history actually shows the ten toes and who they are. But anyway, we'll save that for another video. You see how this fourth beast will go to change times and laws? This is how this papal church is going in to change the feast days, the Sabbath days, even changing some of the laws. Those guys went as far as to change the Ten Commandments. I don't want to go into too much detail, like I said, but that's who we're actually talking about. See how there's a website called preparingforeternity.com talking about the Bible Ten Commandments versus the Roman Catholic Ten Commandments. Let's click to see what they say. You see this? Now, we covered in a video how they changed the date of Pentecost and made it based on Easter instead of calculating it based on what the Bible tells us to do it. That's changing times. And many people have heard the argument on how they changed the Sabbath days to Sundays. That's changing times. But if you look here at the Ten Commandments, they actually changed the Ten Commandments. They took out number two altogether. They changed the wording in number four from Sabbath day to Lord's day. And then in order to make up for the commandment that they removed, they split the 10th commandment into two separate commandments. They changed the 10 commandments. They changed the laws. So it should be real easy to understand who is being talked about here in Daniel chapter 7. I could give a whole class on what's being talked about here, even in verse 25, when it says how he speaks great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. But I want to focus on this part right here where it says, and they shall be given into his hand unto a time and times and the dividing of times. Talking about the saints. And how the saints will be given into the hands of the papal church for a time, time, and half a time. 
Now, you guys are on YouTube, and I know how it is. You be on YouTube looking for something to watch every once in a while. Jump over and watch how Constantine took over the church back there in 312 AD. You'll see how a guy who had been murdering the disciples of Christ all of a sudden became their leader and has been their leader ever since. Now I'm looking over at a website called softschools.com which I found after doing a search in Google for Constantine Timeline and we can read all about this guy named Constantine in this website but I want to jump down to the year 312 and show you something in the year 312 AD it says Constantine takes the sigil of the Christian cross in battle now you can read what it says there what it is talking about is how Constantine who had been decapitating Christians the disciples of Christ in 312 AD all of a sudden on October the 28th 312 AD under the advice of Christian leaders who had turned to fight for the enemy learn how it was that he was to conquer these people see just like back there in Pharaoh's time how Pharaoh had prophets and priests that knew how to battle against Moses all throughout history some of the fathers priests and Levites have turned to serve the government and to serve the enemy and gave them insight as to how to defeat the father's people that's going on today Donald Trump knows what time it is and the Pope knows what time it is you best believe that but here in 312 AD the Pope got guidance from these traitors from these priests who are now serving the beast that all he had to do was to pick up a certain symbol of the Most High and put it on his shields and on his weapons and on his horses and march in and he would trick the people into believing that he had converted over to Christianity you say well you may not be so easily fooled just because the leader does some act the thing is after this so-called conversion he immediately made it a rule that they could no longer kill these disciples they could no longer kill these Christians so whether they totally believed him or not the fact that he made it against the law for them to be killed made them put hope in him and they did they went on to have the Council of Nicaea and the Council of Trent where they turned over all the scriptural documents and allowed the Pope and his churches to decide which books will be considered in the Canaan and when he changed the Sabbath day and changed other times and did other things you can find all of that information on the web this is the information age but in this video we want to focus on this October 28th 312 date now I'm just now realizing that it's October the 28th I had, plan I had just planned on talking about 312 but we definitely need to go back and look at the October 28th date even if we have to do so in another video now jumping back over here in Daniel chapter 12 Gabriel is explaining to Daniel the third temple or the great awakening some call it the rapture in chapter 12 we've covered that in other videos and we will do so in the future so go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can see when those videos come out and this one I want to focus a little bit more on verse 7 you see right there in verse 6 where he says 
And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the rivers, how long shall it be to the end of these wonders? Now this man he's talking to, I believe is Gabriel. It could be Michael. But Gabriel is the one in charge of our awareness. Gabriel is the one who helps us to understand stuff. Gabriel is the guy who's in charge of our dreams and the understanding of our dreams. I don't know how to do so, but if you can invoke the Archangel Gabriel, he will give you dreams. Just ask him for it. Ask your father to help Gabriel to give you the dreams. That's where our dreams come from. But anyway, he's being asked, when will be the end of all of these wonders? All of these things that are supposed to take place as far as the third temple, the rapture, all of this other stuff that's going on. When is this supposed to end? When is the end of these wonders? End of these wonders. Verse 7 says, I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, that it shall be for a time, times, and a half. A time, time, and a half. And when he shall accomplish to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. Now, we talked about a few minutes ago how Constantine took over the church there in 312 AD. You could imagine a lot of people didn't put faith in Constantine at that time and a lot of people would have started to be scattered at that time in 312 AD but remember in 685 AD they were told to leave by the Messiah who told them when they saw that dome of the rock when they saw that abomination that they were supposed to leave Jerusalem he told them that in Matthew chapter 24 you see how up there in verse 11 of Matthew 24 is talking about false prophets that shall deceive many. Imagine how many people have been fooled by the papal church. And then down here in verse 15, he's talking about the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Over there in Daniel chapter 12, stand in the holy place, which is Jerusalem. That's why it's got this part right here. It says, Whoso readeth, let him understand. He goes on to tell him to flee. Flee into the mountains. Go away. Get out. And that is exactly what they did. Those people fled down into Africa. And they never returned. That's what it means by it's made desolate, is they never came back. They're not even welcome back these days. That who are over there in Jerusalem now is what's called the nation of Israel. The real Israel either followed the Messiah's commandment to leave Jerusalem when the Dome of the Rock went up or they were killed. They killed millions of them that disobeyed that commandment or didn't know about that commandment and stayed in Israel. They killed all of the real Israelites that were left. There's none there now. But you see right here, after the times, time, and half a time, he says, And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. So this is the end he's talking about here. The end shall be after the time and a time and a half a time is over. So when did they start? They started in 312 AD, October the 28th, 312 AD. So when were they in? I wish I had a better calculator to show you guys. But this one will work. Let's put in 312 AD. And we're going to say plus three and a half times. A time times and half a times. That's three and a half. That's why it's written like that. Time is one time. Times is two times. 1 plus 2 makes 3, and a half makes 3 and a half. But let's put in that 490 years. What do you think we're going to end up at? Twenty, 
27. Folks like, hey, wait, wait, I thought we were going to be at 2020. No, he said the end, not the beginning. He said the end. Now, this is not an original chart. But as you can see, there's a lot of talk about the year 2027. We talked about how the third temple or the rapture could start in 2020 or is supposed to start in 2020 according to Daniel chapter 12. Well, if that is the beginning of the tribulation, and I do say if because I, I don't intend to predict anything. I'm just pulling out Bible facts. You know. So if that is the beginning of the tribulation, we can expect it to end in 2027 according to Daniel. In Daniel chapter 12, he's both pointing to 2020 and 2027. If you got something out of this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't, go ahead and hit the dislike button. But leave us a comment either way. We'll be back to talk about the October 28th and how that is probably significant in the 312. Shalom.